Hello, hello, hello. Hey. Thought I'd give you guys 15 minutes to relax a little bit. Thank you. I hope you did. Fantastic. Let me get this out of the way first. Just put that in. They insist you fill in it. It's time, I don't know why. Now, I have the gentleman running off a case study which I'm going to give to you guys to have a look at. And what I'd like for you to do for next week's session, our final session, is to read through the case study and then make some notes of the key aspects of the case study that relates to all of this stuff we're talking about. So that should be an interesting exercise just to see if you can read the case study and recognize these principles along the way. So if you can indicate, for example, in your response, the principle or the concept is X, and then give an example from the case study, that would be great. I'm not looking for perfection, just a little attention to see if you can make the connection. Is the gentleman from Bahamas Development Bank here? Does that mean he's here or not? Oh, so yeah, the mortgage shop. Oh, no, what he didn't answer there. <laughs> yes, he knew. And I wanted to see if he was going to say, boy, look, you have to say the exact thing for me to respond. Because <laughs> nowadays we cannot afford to be mixed up. That's a risk. Huge risk. Mm -hmm. Maybe not a credit risk, but well, it could be a credit risk too. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything's so risky these days, you can't do anything. Wow. Bahamas Development Bank. Do you guys do micro loans, um, Bahamas Development Bank? Which one? Are you not a loan officer? Credit. Credit risk. Sorry, credit delinquency. Oh, delinquency. Okay, you're on the other side of the fence. You are the result of poor risk management. <laughs> and we know, maybe I should have done a case study on. <laughs> Didn't have the time to write that one up. So where's the credit officer in the corner? Do you guys do microloans at Bonham's Zone? We do micro loans. Aha. 
I'm going to talk about that today. Mm-hmm. But a micro loan is when you give very small loans to people in the lower income bracket because they don't have the resources to get a big time loan. So they want to open up a little stall for the new Disney thing that's coming at Uther. How's that? And they need $2,000. So that's what the government's offering now. Yes. The new business owners for yes. Yeah, Startup. under the new thing at through COB, that the thingy, Small mm-hmm. Business Enterprise thing, mm-hmm. FCBD, some other acronym again. Yeah, through that program, the government is offering what we call micro loans to those persons who want to borrow. You can borrow more than five thousand if you have a good project, but if you only need. 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000, they'll lend you that too, all things being equal. Hmm? I guess as long as you're not on dope. Hmm. People don't say dope anymore. Marijuana isn't illegal anymore even. Is it still legal in the, illegal in the Bahamas? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For no. now. For now. But I heard somebody from it's the first It's allowed for medicinal purposes. For medicinal purposes. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. yes, it, is. it is. It is. Already in the Bahamas? Yes, it is. So it has to be sanctioned by a doctor, though. Mm. It's legal. Yeah, doctor has to prescribe it. Yeah, your doctor has to say it's okay. So if you are good friends with your doctor, you can stay high. Can you? Like, if you're good friends with your doctor, your doctor is your boy. Nobody wants to think about non-compliant issues. <laughs> That's good. I'm just making the point that there's risk everywhere. Even though the doctor has to sanction it, you could people can become friends with the doctor and let him sanction it and stay high. Are you going to get high? <laughs> Call their friend. Right. Question. Oh, <laughs> sometimes I just yeah, me. Sometimes, like today, I'd rather be. Yeah. So when we make marijuana legal in the Bahamas, since we like to follow fashion, we like to do everything folks do elsewhere. Everything the world does, the monkeys. Does that mean all those persons who went to prison for that amount of marijuana will be set free? No, because at the time they were... No. At the time they committed a crime, it was At the time they committed a crime. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it should have become the facility is already over. Yeah, if somebody's in prison for a joint when it was illegal, now it's legal, why not let them out do community service something? Yeah, then they have to No, put them on parole, let them do some community service for the rest of the time, go clean up the geriatrics, see? No, they are fine. No, they are fine. Only if it's a second or third offense, they spend time. Oh. A joint? No, most persons I know get fined. Most persons I know are in jail. 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 Most persons I but the guy who has like a, a back trunk worth. Like, ah, devil with it, man. <laughs> say climbing. Who said, who said climbing? He climbing to that. It's funny. Stop him in the trap. Oh, man. Okay. The point is, no matter what you do, there's risk, man. You can't escape. What the heck is that? that? Oh, pills. <laughs> what do you call it? Percocet and what? Damn, scentless marijuana. Really? Uh, scentless dope, yeah. I come right in, grab a chair. Who's Molly again? Wow. It's an interesting new world you youngsters are growing up into. Glad it's you. Not me. Sorry for maturing them. All right. 
Just waiting for my sheet to move its way around. Does anybody remember where we stopped the last time? 17 principles. 17 principles. Okay. Did anybody read them? Uh, yeah, just now. That's what I did with the 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's unless you're a nerdy student, that's how it is. <laughs> that's funny. So just now, during the 15 minute interval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, right about number 19, we stopped that. So we on 20. Ah. My baby, who's 21, just studied for his driving test, you know, the theory part. And he passed the test. He was so delayed. He said, Dad, thank God I don't have to read anything anymore. <laughs> One little, it's... <laughs> he hates reading. When you said 15 minutes, I, that's remind me of that. He hates it with a passion. He only reads because he, like has my guy to. in the back, he is compared, yeah, has to. Anything that isn't relevant, he is not interested in reading it. Sometimes I even envy him to a point. <laughs> All right. So for those of you who took look at the book and said, man, I'm not reading that today, I get it. But don't do that too often. <laughs> Comes back to haunt you. Okay, seriously. Turns your night life into a nightmare. Trying to catch up. Angry with the world. Curse God and die. All kinds of stuff. Mistreat your children. Mean to your spouse. All kinds of stuff happens when you procrastinate. And you start running out of time. <laughs> time, especially. Okay, so please keep reading. Alright. Where's my sheet? Is it moving? Coming, moving, coming right along. All right. So while we wait for the others to finish up, let's just look at the uh, principles based on the Basel paper. Anybody ever heard about the Basel Committee? Mm -hmm. Who's heard about the Basel Committee? One, two, three, and one. What did you guys hear about the Basel Committee? They set rules and regulations. Yeah, they set rules and regulations all the other committees. <laughs> what else did they do? Yeah, she said, let me just simplify it. The central bank has based all its guidelines on the Basel committee. Yeah, and the reason for that is, <laughs> yeah, I like that. When all else fail, go to the central bank issue. The Basel committee is responsible for setting up these credit policy issues so that they can guide central banks around the world mm -hmm. in what they should be doing to control what? Their banks in their particular countries. Mm -hmm. okay? That's what the Basel Committee is all about. So it's these guys that came up with these 17 principles, but before that, they had an opening salvo. And this is their opening salvo before the 17 principles. I want to get 17, they probably just went around other stuff. Could they have made those 17 principles shorter, you think? Like maybe seven? Maybe. But I guess they wanted to be 17 so that you could understand how egregious the matter is. And for those of us who were around during the last recession, anybody remembers that? Or it's history now? 2008. Yeah, 2008 until 2014 or some crap like that. Yeah. When the whole world suffered. Yeah. Some people are still suffering. Still suffering. Yeah, right. still in it. You might be surprised to find that the reason for that, primarily, and certainly to a great extent, was credit mismanagement. Banks were lending like they had no sense. Mm -hmm. Then the mortgage loans that the banks were given, giving, they got greedy and started bundling them into investment products. Mm -hmm. And selling the investment products with the bank's mortgage collateral, which are your houses, mm -hmm. as collateral for those investments. <laughs> so when the housing market crashed, so the then the houses. investment products were no longer of any value. 
So the investors started to do what? Scream for their which means that the fines had to find ways to sell homes almost mm -hmm. overnight to get money to satisfy the investors. Yeah. It was an unholy It was an unholy mess. Please take one, pass the others down for me, please. Anybody in the class was there, was directly affected by the recession, or just your parents? Yeah. Oh, yes. That means everybody then. Yeah. Well, it's different if your parents are affected, because my kids don't even know. What is? <laughs> they don't know what the what's gonna happen. Because yeah. as parents, we should not take our problems too hard. Yeah, they may start to worry. Why? Why we shouldn't? Yeah, let them. The problem is, if you take it to them too soon, they might panic, yeah. yeah. And start yeah, thinking it's their fault, and maybe if they kill themselves, yes. there'll be one less problem yes. for you. Because yes. children have strange <laughs> minds. Extreme, extreme. They do. <laughs> Every time people get divorced, children always blame themselves. It's us. And so they're angry and sad and mean, because they think it's them. If it were not for us, Little bastards, they say to themselves, I guess. Which, of course, is not true. It's not their fault. But they don't understand that. And even if you tell them, they still don't get it. Not properly explained. It's not, no not matter how you explain it, all they know is you're either together or not. not. Any explanation other than that is an exercise in futility until they get to something, if they get there. Sorry? Scar the children. Yeah. yeah. All right. There you go. Thank you. Does so everybody have a copy? Great. How fun. Reading. Yeah, more reading. No, not for tonight. It's for the week. When we come next week and we're done with our discussion, operational risks and so on, then we'll have a little uh, brief chit chat about what you came up with in terms of whether you were able to identify any hot spots. Thank you. Great. I'm so sorry. I'm Fascinating. The same person who used like a magic pence last week used the same one this week. It almost looks like a blind spot to me. <laughs> That's interesting. I would have never thought that it would have happened twice in a row. <laughs> Okay, so what did this bloody committee have to say? <laughs> Folks, make no mistake, this is a very, very serious committee, the Basel Committee on Credit Management. Hops huge. As a matter of fact, they influence all the banks around the entire world. And if you piss off any one of them, they can find a way to get you. What I found interesting is I think last week you indicated that there are only a few countries that are not a part of the Basel Committee. Because they're state strong state. and powerful enough. Mm -hmm. Their market is so is so robust and so resourceful that they don't necessarily to depend on the rest of the world to survive. Okay. Unlike the rest of us, if we do not follow through, they will cut off stuff. They will cut off our corresponding banking. Mm -hmm. So we will not be able to do international yeah. banking. Yeah. They will cut us I off and, yeah. I just was just thinking, because I, I was thinking along those lines, and my thought process was the fact that the majority of those corresponding banks, for the most part, are with the U.S. I mean, with the exception of Bernie, perhaps you have um, U.K., you have... Well, the problem is, banks. only the U.S. corresponding banks we might be able to do business with, but we want to go outside the U.S. Yeah, like, to okay. the rest of the world, yeah. yeah, then we would have a problem. And let us not forget that the European market and all the countries that they influence are also impacted. Yeah. So, yeah, we yeah. are not in a position yet 
to say we don't need the EU and all the other countries no, outside of the US and Canada, unfortunately. Okay. China is our ally? <laughs> I don't know what risk that is. You mean China loves us? That would be hell. Everybody wants us. That would be hell. They want to rape us of our resources. No, we're strategic. We're strategically located. Folks, some food for thought. Who loves us more, Uncle Sam or Uncle Jing? <laughs> We're on the question of risk, we might as well look at all these. Let go to occupy? Mm -hmm. What? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Choose which one you will serve. You cannot serve God, man. Which one is God? <laughs> which one is Balan? <laughs> okay. Either way, this whole credit. See, the problem with credit is we have all kinds of different risks. The problem with credit risk is, if credit risk fails, what happens to everything else? Collapses. All right, so the credit risk and credit issue is almost like the foundation. That's why bankers and then those gang, those people, sorry, are so powerful. Because the whole world, yeah, the whole world is tied up in the credit web. That's why countries are always willing to give you more and more loans. Oh, by the way, we are at 8.2 billion now. Who is this? Who? Our country there. What happened to that extra money we get in Central Bank? What extra? We can't use money. We can't use that. What you mean? The dollar account? You find out where was the last payment? You mean the reserves? Yeah. No, the re that money they owe it for that fellow. What? <laughs> oh, <hang on. laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to say that reliable sources from the central bank says that Johnny, whatever his name is, that Johnny thing is rubbish. Right. <laughs> right. Whether or not it is, we don't know. Until something else happens, we have to take their word for it. <laughs> but it is some food for thought. But this is not rubbish. Okay, so while you guys thinking about your future, maybe it doesn't matter to you, like, hell with it. The point is, if you're, if you're not raising money from taxes, you have to borrow. And we saw from the definition of borrowing, that borrowing is what? Credit. Now, our government should be in here. Trying to see how to manage the risk. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not going to be in here because they figure they have it all together. They're, they have the central bank, they have all these other people, they don't need to be here. How to manage risk. The problem is, governments, when they make the decision to borrow, don't necessarily consult credit experts. Wow. Like, let's have some caviar around the table and discuss whether or not this is a good decision. Hell no. no. They make a political decision to borrow. And if you don't like it, lump it. Self-preservation. Doggone it. <laughs> well, after all, we have all these people to pay it back over the next gazillion years. Mm. And better still, those of us who are making decisions today will be dead when the real tr <laughs> trouble comes. Uh, so, um, the when you look at the debt to GDP ratio for the country, if that were to be applied to an individual in the banking system, they would never get a loan. Hell no. They tell us that we are around 60 something percent or thereabouts. Hell no. In the in the Bahamas, your TDS needs to be around what? 45 percent. Or lower. So if you're 46.5, it's over 45. Yeah, but as a country, we're near 80 percent. Yeah. And Barbados is over 100 percent along with Jamaica and some countries close to 100 and over. Yeah. But we're approaching 80 percent, which is far too high. Either way, it's a problem because the only the only place to go, only place to go is down. We're the only country holding on to a dollar that's comparable, and you're not going to be able to hold on like that forever. 
What happens if we have to devalue our dollar one day? No backup plans. Well, we have one consolation. That since our tourist industry is so robust, it'll make tourism what? Cheaper. If it goes down. <laughs> for visitors to come in? I have party. Yeah, it'd be cheaper for them to visit us. But other than stuff like that, while it makes it cheaper for visitors to come in, it makes us makes it very expensive for us to buy that mm. oil that we need to keep our lights on. Imagine that. <laughs> Trump was just meeting with Caribbean leaders to remind them that they should stay away from rogue governments. <laughs> That's okay. Just be careful that you keep your relationships according to certain governments above board. Do not sleep with certain types of if, if a country is a communist country, don't do business with them. Is what some governments are saying. And the communist country is saying, so what if you're communist? Don't be prejudicial. Let us do what we want to do. Let those behemoths make their own decisions. The Saudis? And I wonder why. What the hell the Saudis want with it? I'm always suspicious when folks start what? Handing out? Money. Yes. Like that three million thing they built, they, that they gave us as a gift. Yeah. That sports center thing? Yes. Yeah. You mean the Chinese? Yeah. Why they gave us that gift? Because that's what they did. That'll put the doors. That's inducement. Inducement. With all that VAT money, we couldn't build our own $3 million stadium. That's what about. What about the VAT money? Why the increase if we're giving the freaking The last payment on this loan? Yes. The problem is, we can go and check to see what the last payment was. The problem is, it is very likely that that last payment was only an interest payment. Wow. And for any of you who know anything about credit, an interest payment does nothing to do with, with the principal. principal. Oh. Let's ask a question. I mean, I haven't read it in detail, but wouldn't all of this have been covered in the budget? So perhaps it says... The um, X amount has been allocated towards the national debt. But chances are, whatever Which was paid is, is only an interest, interest payment. Yeah. Only interest payment. If you guys know what the interest is on mm -hmm. eight billion, yeah. you would be so shocked. That's where, that's where the back money goes. Okay, yeah. go to your computer and take it to seventeen decimal places. Sorry. What? Interest rate. Oh, I'm not sure the exact rate because it varies depending on who you borrow the money from. Correct. So it's anywhere from one percent. To doggone maybe 10%. I thought we only borrowed Let's from the IDB. Hell no. Someone indicated something to me. I don't know how true it is. They're saying that... Um, Someone from the Central Bank? Up, no. <laughs> <laughs> Someone indicated something to me that Trump and Biden are going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come out with a statement that they're going to come what type of risk do you actually um, foresee that um, having for the biking industry and then I guess overall cash as a whole? Yeah, there's, there's no doubt that anything electronic creates a huge risk. In fact, you can't even trust what's on your telephone, on your computer anymore, because people continue to hack into these systems. So the moment something goes electronic, you're going to have the super doggone dudes on the highway looking to crack into it. That's the first and major problem. Yeah. And then with, with electronic transactions, you can hide stuff a lot. A lot. And things move finance, quickly. And AML yeah. and so forth, but I mean, I can't see how it is with that the government actually wants or, or maybe looking at doing that when it's the fact that this money is untraceable for the most part. Well, some of it will eventually end up in strange and unknown places. Yeah. That's part of the problem, which is part of the reason why uh, our government and others should stay away from it until until it has been tried and yes. tested, whenever that is. I don't know the big rush to jump in it unless they're starting off with $500 or something. That's what I would recommend. Until we start work out the what? Quirks, yeah.
Yeah, it's it's there's still a whole lot that is unknown about cryptocurrency. And it's to me, it's no accident it seems that we say it's crypto. Yeah. <laughs> because if any of you are familiar with the prefix encryption. crypt, yeah. It Isn't seems like there's something grave? spooky, yeah. dark, and unknown. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they didn't even have the decency to call it something like love currency. <laughs> they they can't call it crypto. No bullion. Yeah, it's secured. <laughs> like the guy who died with the crypto codes in his head. Yeah. They, yeah. The yeah. dog on money is crypto somewhere. Yeah. And he's the only one with the bloody access, access codes. And he dropped dead. He thought... He would live until whenever. <laughs> I don't know what the hell gave us that information when we could in fact die when? At any flicking time. Like I could be like this, at any <laughs> Just like that. We won't be laughing. No, it's not. No, I'm just saying. That's part of the problem. How the hell he can only have it in his head? It's not like when you go on a job. Excuse me, what's the policy for this? I have it in my head. Whatever I tell you, do, do. That's what you tell the regulators. Well, people do. Don't tell the regulators that. Regulators hate that crap. They don't want to say, but I have it in my head? No. Boy, I hate that. The minute you tell the regulator you have it in your head, they're totally pissed. They start looking for breaches right away. Breach, breach, breach. Yeah. 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 Crypto password. Yeah. Oh, I guess for his own no, no. No, he had clients. Seven billion clients. Yeah. So why didn't have the same? Oh, what? Why didn't have the wallet? The same reason why we, <laughs> the, we didn't have the uh, whatever cost the plane is going on the other day. Seven million. Seven million. I agree. There should be the checks and balances, but it doesn't always happen because somebody's always running their own little what? Scam. And that's why we have we try to have regulation so that people don't run their own program. That's why the biggest the biggest enemy any any organization has is the flicking board of directors. Because if the board is corrupt, dog eat your lunch. If your CEO is corrupt, corrupt, dog eat your lunch. We are not the problem. The problem is up there, and they're usually the people. It was hardest to get to. Parachutes. <laughs> Even in the business of credit. Okay. Those major multi-million billion dollar loans that have been written off and those bad loans that they did that caused the crash, they were not done by regular loan officers. They were done by whom? Top management. Because they're the only ones who could flick in. Of course. So while they're harassing you with your little twenty thousand dollar loan, like why you didn't get the dog job, then of course. <laughs> while they're harassing you for that crap, they're up there doing the multi-million dollar garbage. Make no mistake about it. And every time I walk in an organization in my whole career, and the executive management looks creepy. I get that funny feeling in my stomach, <laughs> that thinking sick feeling. But sooner or later, they're going to come to me with stuff, and I'm going to have to. Walk and uh -huh. I don't want nobody to ask me to conform. But I, can, I don't mind conforming, as long as it's the what? The right thing to do. Yes. Just don't ask me, like, stay behind. We have to discuss something that is not in the manual. That is sick. That stinks. Well, for some people that's fine. But yeah, like I could feel off the record. Yeah. Off the record. I have a secret. Oh my god. <laughs> if you work in an organization that stuff is going on, but I don't know. Hypothetically. Yeah, we yeah, hypothetically speaking. I suppose it's hypothetically The minute I hear anything like that, I'm like, oh my god. Here I go again, I have to be what I have to be. All right, these people. So what is Basel doing? Basel is trying to correct some of these things we're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's the point, they say, mm -hmm. by putting these things in place and making it what? A global issue. Mm -hmm. So that everybody, hopefully, somehow, mm -hmm. is what? Watching everybody else. Okay. So what do they say? First of all, establish you bankers, and not only bankers, financial services people who give credit of any kind, 
uh, risk, credit risk what? Environment. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't set up things in the environment that is spooky and unseemly and <laughs> illegal and all that stuff. Credit, but see, that's what appropriate means. Make sure it's above the law. Yeah. Okay. Secondly, operate under a what? Sound. Yeah, don't give loans because that's your boy, mm -hmm. your gal, your political ally, your yeah, lag loan. In the old days, we used to call it lag loan. Lag loan. <laughs> Since only a few young, I wouldn't ask. I lost one of the young fellas in the back. Uh, what do you think a lag loan is? A loan from the He further complicated. Okay, so he knows. Trauma four. Two. Two. Yeah. Some loan officers were so corrupt, not only did they give lag loans, they also paid for the loan. I know it seems crazy, but it's not as crazy as you think. Really? Yes. When you see executive management doing some crazy things, it may look crazy, but it's not as crazy as you think. There's a whole lot of incentive, as far as they're concerned, <laughs> underlying it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's why Basel talks about operating what? Sound. 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 And operating means what? Day by day by day. Not when you feel like it. Not what mood you're in. Yes, Lord. On a regular basis. <laughs> maintain. Notice these words. Establish. Operate. Operate. And maintain. maintain. <laughs> and appropriate what? Credit. So that everybody knows what the deal is. So that if anybody steps out, it'll be obvious. Mm -hmm. yes. <coughs> what the hell is Mr. Jones doing? Does he know that the policy says... Uh, <laughs> I know. Management discretion. What a sick. That's like trusty discretion. It's a dangerous thing. Especially one man yeah. is making the decision. Yeah. Which means that any loan over a certain amount, like maybe half a million, not even too much, anything over 100000 has to go to committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in order for egg to go on, everybody has to sell their soul to the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have some committees where, credit committees, where they can get everybody to sell their souls to the devil. John, I'll give you... Uh, we agree, we share. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so now all of a sudden the whole committee is picking... <laughs> But it's harder to corrupt a whole committee than it is one person. Okay? That's what we mean. Uh, so, establish, operate, maintain, then measure and monitor. Don't leave it alone. Okay, guys, when you get married, don't say, bad time, got a married, and you check with that check. If you don't check, Mr. Compel will check. Because you're not monitoring. So many loans have gone where? To the dogs because organizations don't? monitor. They come back to the situation too late. They're not checking. They book the loan and leave it for one reason or another. Okay. So these guys have a good idea what they're talking about. These are based on years and years and decades and decades of experiences. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay. And then ensure what? That the controls are there and they are sufficient. Yeah. And then finally, Let's not forget these people again. Dog on regulators. <coughs> Consider the role of supervisors, the central banks, and other supervisors in your mm. system. Know that their role is to come and check you to make sure that you're doing your role. Yeah. And that if you're found wanting, you will be fined and or imprisoned. Fined and or imprisoned. And in some cases, you can lose your banking license. Okay. Now, for some of us who just work in the bank or financial institution, we said, to hell with it, don't care, they'll find another job. But for the institution losing it, it's a major mm -hmm. problem for them. Think about all the millions that they see going down there. Because the license is now gone. You'd think that some of them would take more care to protect their licenses. And many of them do. Central bank and supervisors are also what? A little reluctant to arbitrarily take licenses. Because taking a license has what? Significant implications. 
So what we do instead, we harass you. We, we yeah, we look at you, state. We write, we write egg. Has any findings ever gone to jail time? Non compliant bastard. Sorry? Has any findings ever gone to jail time? In the Bahamas? Mm -hmm. Not yet. <laughs> the problem is, white collar criminals seem to get away with murder almost everywhere, including the Bahamas. If you teeth a loaf of bread, you go to prison quicker than then you steal money. Yeah, our excuse is we don't want to give the institution a bad name. However, if you steal a loaf of bread, you don't have any reputation to maintain. Take your hungry belly and your hungry children and go to prison. But you hung your children hungry. We don't care. But in recent times, though, you see that people going before the courts now for those sorts of matters are getting time. Yeah, finally, under the new administration. <laughs> Take them down. <laughs> they tell me that people even persecuting former yeah. <laughs> something that has never happened in the history of the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. if not the entire Caribbean. That was funny yeah. when I was going on though. That was hilarious. It's a good precedent. Now everybody's watching. Everybody. It's a good thing. But most of them, all of them, if not all, are thrown out, eh? Not so far, but it's not over one until the one is up for appeal and the other one is pending. Mm. So maybe they're letting Tom Jones sweat it out. <laughs> so even if you don't get no time, he would have sweated it out. I think if we had some foreign people over uh, those cases, it may not have ended the way it did. They had foreign persons over them. No, I'm talking. You mean that judges. they would have been convicted? Everybody, everybody, everybody's oh, family were, uh, in the Bahamas. Yeah, everybody is a PLP or F and M or DNA. They brought in, they brought in prosecutors and prosecutors yeah. trying to now. I know, but they told me to the grapevine that some major, major families and political allies showed up in the cause like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not to pull out extra chairs, but let this happen in the Bahamas. That's a mistake. Stare the judge down. Mm -hmm. Shoot. And this is my wife, and these are all my children. These are my cousins, and these are. <laughs> be rich. <laughs> Remember, the next time, the next government might win. I don't know. Oh, this is sick. <laughs> All right. So though that was <laughs> just telling you youngsters what you're in for. Who oh, mind me and thing? <laughs> we passed all that crap. We went through all that crap. All kinds of battles we but we 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 get into that. I don't give up. Sorry. Well we give, we you know. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So, these 17 principles, uh, they're there for you to read, so I'm just going to touch on the key stuff uh, as we move on. You can read all the fabulous details later. First of all, principle number one, the board. These are the guys and girls who are supposed to be setting the bar. They're the ones who are supposed to be creating what? their credit risk strategy mm -hmm. and to determine where that organization is going. That's what they do at the board level on Nova Caviar and Wine. <coughs> That's what they should be doing. And they should be doing it in the best interest of home, their organization, by all means. Remember now, these, these things that we're talking about is the textbook version. We know that the other versions occur outside of the textbook, but this is what we ought to be doing. Okay? Again, these principles, though, can even be taken out of the boundaries of credit into any area that requires compliance. Okay. So whatever area it might be, if it's a firm, the board is still responsible. If it's a partnership, the senior partners are still responsible. If it's a sole proprietorship, the individual is still responsible. Absolutely. If it's the home, the parents are still <laughs> <laughs> I know, we seem to be passing the baton for some reason. Yeah. yeah. That's right, we did get over. But I'm not going to go there right now because that's a sore point. When those chickens come home to roost. <laughs> Ken. And the rest of us 
hopefully I'll be dead. Because <laughs> it's going to be an interesting time. <laughs> but I don't know why you guys started so late though. You should have started 40 years ago. So I could take a break and my wife go out and egg. So I could like be at home get my nails done. Right? What the flick? They didn't work. That's my foot. Did you see it work? It didn't work. I saw it on our TV just <laughs> hit it or kick it. All right. Principle number two. After the board is done, it's senior management job to what? Implement. See? They make the decisions at the top. Senior management job is to implement. Make sure that whatever they say happens. Period. No if, ands, and buts. Whatever you need to do. Sorry? Say that again. Oh. You, you missed an alpine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So they, these guys have to come up with all the policies and procedures and the staffing and whatever the hell it is to make sure this works. And if they don't do it, then these people should get rid of them. And if they don't do it, then the shareholders should get rid of them. Because these guys, these two groups here, under principles one and two, they can cause a firm a nightmare. Mm -hmm. It's because of these two groups here that most firms are being fined multi-billions of dollars now by regulators mm -hmm. all over the world because of these same two jumping the groups here. Bali. <laughs> 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 all right. My one gotta be Bali. Bodies, uh, you can always tell the body people can't be on top. When the body doesn't remember, like, what the hell? All right, principle number three. Banks should identify and manage what? Credit risk that is inherent what? In everything they do. So if you give credit cards, what is the risk there? Who are we giving them to? If the rates are too high, what is the risk that we can have a high delinquency and so on? If you give it to any Tom, Dick, and Harry, chances are we're going to lose a lot of that to bad debt. Mm -hmm. That's what we mean. If you're giving loans, who are you giving loans to? Or what basis, what criteria? Are you giving loans to unemployed people? Mm -hmm. Too many family members? Whatever the hell it is. Yeah. We need to consider the risk that is inherent in whatever we sell. Okay? For sure. All right. Principle number four, banks must what? Operate. Within where? Sound, well-defined credit criteria. Yeah, not just defined. Well. Not just defined. Well. Well means above and beyond. The credit crunch came in 2008 because they forgot the well. And sometimes they forgot even the defined. <laughs> Those guys were letting it rip. <laughs> I'm not kidding at the expense of the entire world eventually. And only a few went to prison. The rest got off with a white collar crimes. The suggestion that it was a reasonable, even though not well-defined risk. That we made the best decision at the time, they said. But let's not make a mistake. While the world went into recession, many of them were, became what? Filthy rich. rich. Not just rich. Filthy, nasty, dirty, stinking rich. If you don't believe me, remember when there was an earthquake in Haiti not too long ago? Yeah. And all those money was gathered by charities and others to rebuild Haiti. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't rebuild Haiti. No. Where is the money? Anybody know? Money. <coughs> No, I mean, that's that is legitimate. We pass laws and all that crap. Where's the money for the, re <laughs> I mean, that's for the charity <laughs> money? Where's that? Yeah, where, where did I Bill those do the check money? Check the board of directors. Yeah, who was in charge of the charity yeah. along with yeah. Bill? Yeah. Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, make no mistake about it, but it's true. <laughs> Folks. I use Haiti as an example, but there are many examples around the world. When you see the world is suffering from disaster and people are coming, quote unquote, to their rescue, some people are coming to their rescue, some people are coming to their oh, own rescue. rescue. Yeah. It is nothing new that mankind has always used disaster to enrich themselves. Where is the dollar money in Haiti? First of all, which bank account did it go to? How much went there? How much was spent? Where are the receipts and what's the balance? Who? Has answered that question. They added nobody. nobody and nobody's interested. I don't do credit risk. 
It has everything to do with everything. See, folks? But we, as usual, we let it what? Go. Because we can't afford to implicate our boy, Billy, and his beloved Hillary. Had it been Donald, though? <laughs> He was in that smart. No, Donald smarted. Yeah. Donald smarted, and a lot of people think yeah. 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 he's smarter than that. I agree. That's why, even though they've been shooting him down from day one, he's still there. <laughs> the Mueller report is out, he's still flicking there. All right, principle number five. Banks should establish what? Overall? Credit limits. The, uh, the young lady from Bahamas, Obama. do you guys have credit limits where you work? Yes, we do. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Which means that certain persons can give loans up to X, and then has to go to Y, and then Z. Yeah. Certain types of loans, they can't, you can't lend above a certain amount for certain types of loans. The, the whole, that's part of principle five, to make sure that you maintain control. Without those things, you will lose control and you start giving $25,000 unsecured loans like Citibank did 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Most of them went bad. Mm -hmm. Most of that money they had to write off. Who the hell gives any person in any country $25,000 unsecured? The Americans. Yeah. So in some cases, more than 25, depending on who you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, government employees got more. Sexy. We don't give insecurity. You work at I was back in the day when they were trying to. They didn't adhere to principle number five and some other principles. As you'll see. Principle number six. Banks should have a clearly established what? Process, Process. for approving. So you come in for an application, uh, then it goes from that person to the next person to review, then from that person to the committee, and so on, so that no one person makes all of the decisions. Boy, that one person thing. Anybody ever been a victim of one person making a decision? Like if you have one boss and you don't have anybody to complain to, dog eat your lunch if they don't? Like you. That's right. I'm just saying. What? As long as he's within the guidelines? Yeah. No, if he's in the guidelines, that's okay. The question is, how long is he going to stay there? Yeah. No, no. Not the guidelines. Um, all right, for instance, um, as a credit officer, I mean, back in the day, as a credit officer, you had a limit for um, up to $15,000. Yes. All right. Clients could come in with um, government deductions, government deduction, uh, deduction TDSR and all that. Basically, they would give you a criteria that you had to, you had to fill in. Yes. Once you, once you, once you fill in that criteria, you were, you were able to approve that loan and get as much out of the box. Indeed. Someone did have to check it after you to make sure that. Uh, the only person, I, the only person I had to check it, I thought, probably the manager. Afterwards, that's they, enough. That's, that's enough. But, 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 check. but, 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 the, but the fact is that it, it was already gone. It was already been approved. Money that gone. Yeah. So what was the manager checking? To see if you could spell cat? Basically, just to see that you stayed within, that you stayed within the guidelines. Suppose he discovered you did not, not have to stay in the guidelines. What happened then? Well, then I guess, I guess they would revoke your limit or, revo or revoke your, 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 your limit. Indeed. That was, that was prior to this person, the funds, though. No, but your point is taken. If you are operating within the guidelines established by the board and your manager is happy with the results upon reviewing your work, then for all intents and purposes, we don't have a problem unless somebody comes behind and say those guidelines stink. Yeah. I'm saying. But I guess that's his point. He's just saying you should have the clearly defined guidelines. Yeah, if you yeah. say not whereas there is no guideline and you could walk in, you could make a decision, yeah. and and you'd make it on on this premise. You could make a decision on this premise. So he's saying once there is a once you have your guidelines and you're doing it, no problem. No problem until somebody comes and says those guidelines suck. Because yes. remember, you can have guidelines, yeah. but that doesn't mean the guidelines are not subject to what? <laughs> Scrutiny as well. Yeah. Again, the guidelines are placed from your board, come straight down, right? Remember the board. If the board is. Yeah, if, if the board is operating properly, then everybody feels comfortable. 
But if you're bored, sucks. the hit, yeah, sucks. And many <laughs> boards suck. Too. Trust me on that one. Yeah, then you have a different kind of problem, mm -hmm. which is not your problem. It's a board level problem. Okay. Yeah, and that's then the regulators will come in with the Basel rules and say these guidelines that you have are too strict or too lax or too something else. Always. Always, or some other political something else. Still comes within the guidelines that it was set, yes or no? Because he cannot, or the individual cannot give the loan by himself as if it's outside my guidelines. Well, then if there's always the risk of collusion, no, there's always the risk of collusion. If, 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 like if your guidelines like are like strong enough, yeah. then it will not allow for I'm lag and other like types of loans. Like <laughs> if you're in the guidelines <laughs> and you can still do <laughs> that, then chances are. The guidelines are questionable. No, but however, though, uh, some, some, um, you may have, right, and we're talking back in the day, I'm sure, but we hope we'll be talking People about it. People talk some modern stuff now, 21st century crap. But, but we know how Bahamians go. They may be within guidelines, but they can still try to, they can still try to get the leg loan under the guise that you can't get it, but they know it in the guidelines just to get the leg, what? Well, we have to always, yeah. People operate within the guidelines and still a yeah. somehow. That's why you have to always have what? The proper checks and balances. Even the, Remember the guidelines just one aspect of it. There's nothing to do with the monitoring and all the other stuff you need to do. Because folks will always find the way. Right? They give a loan to themselves in the guidelines. <laughs> Back in the day when I was a young loan officer, we had a loan officer who worked in the department. Somehow she was able to give herself to some uh, about five or six loans mm -hmm. that were on the books and they were not discovered until she had to go away sick or something and the loan went delinquent or whatever and then they discovered that there were several of them within the guidelines wow. duly signed by the manager mm -hmm. or the person authorized to do so mm -hmm. it's just that they were made to fake names fake addresses fake this fake that uh, and then the money transferred to her account you put the trust in someone. That's you put the? Now those loans were in the guidelines. Yeah. <coughs> and signed off. Correct. But you put the? Trust. Easy. They didn't have um, uh, processes to like make a checklist at that time. Or? Yeah, they did. But you get you get so close to your somebody and then you start trusting people. That's my girl, that's my boy, mm -hmm. they ain't never do that. No, they ain't not. Once they bring on a family, assignments for me. This person starts out as a good person in terms of... And they're still a good person that's making yeah. bad loans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, even though you have the things in place, crap can still happen. Yeah. So, which is why you have to always keep... That's where the monitoring comes in. You have to always be looking at the system to see if it's working the way you want it to work. Or maybe whether or not somebody's what? Stepping out of the boundaries within the boundaries. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You can you can follow the guidelines, still be stepping out of the boundaries okay. by doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. My my my. Wow. Crazy as hell. Alright? Now principle seven, <laughs> loans should be made, all all credit should be made on a what? Arms length like basis. Business. And particularly if you're giving credit to persons within the organization or another company within the firm, whatever. Not no sp no preferential oh. treatment. The same loan that you give externally to somebody on the outside, if you're doing an internal loan, it should be based on the same principles, arm's length. Otherwise, you're going to set yourself up for stuff. Yeah. Make no mistake, which is why a lot of organizations don't like internal loans, especially loans to directors and executive management. They'd rather give it to low-level employees first because mm -hmm. they're more controllable. When you start giving it to top management, that's more like a bribe sometimes. And a loan that oftentimes may not get paid? Yeah, all of a sudden it goes into provisions for next year and, and suddenly it's what? Written off? Mm -hmm. And the board agrees because they all have the... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So every every six months a, you give a loan to a board member and then next year we all agree. All in favor say aye. You can write it off. Bye, bye, bye.
Principle number eight, banks should have in place a what? A system for ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. Check your portfolio regularly. See what kinds of loans are in there. See how many loans are given to persons who were employed for less than one year. How many people only were li still living with their mom and dad and they're 75? <laughs> Whatever it is. Now you say, so what's wrong with mom and dad? Nothing. Just making a point. All right. And we'll see later why that comes up. Principle nine, banks must have a place what? For monitoring. We said that. Monitor check, monitor check, monitor check, monitor. Can't say it enough. The minute you stop checking, man, people start getting creative. Okay? My son told me the other day, Dad, how come you still walk past my room at night? I tell him it's a bad habit. <laughs> Because when they were growing up, I always checked the room. He said, do you remember to check the room? Every night. I'm not looking for anything in particular. I'm just monitoring. Yeah. <laughs> so even if they're thinking about it, they don't know when, when I'm going to step in. When I'm going to check something. When, when they're not there, I'm going to investigate <laughs> further. Because they know that I am always monitoring them. <clears throat> Same principle. Organizations are like that. You stop monitoring. Folks are getting creative. Okay, guys? While you're running off with three other chicks, your wife starts getting creative. <laughs> Say, Mom, what is it? I don't want to hear that. All right. <laughs> Same principle. That's the point of <laughs> Ah. Principle number 11, banks must have what? Information systems, technology to help them do the job what? Better, more efficiently, and so on. If you're on a complete manual system, dog eat your lunch. You'll be doing something, but you'll be open to all kinds of stuff, especially in the 21st century. Okay. Uh, let's not forget those off-balance sheet transactions, things that are not on the record officially, but they are commitments. For example, if your firm guarantees a loan somewhere without board approval for someone, for some reason, for some kickback for 25 million that means if the other party doesn't pay that's still on your books, you didn't get a loan mm -hmm. but you guaranteed somebody else's mm -hmm. you'd be surprised, people in love do it people who get kickbacks do it mm -hmm. people who are fraudulent do it mm -hmm. it happens all the time mm -hmm. Susie, why are you, you co-signing with him? Because I love him. <laughs> Suppose he doesn't pay the loan. He, yeah. Please. Don't talk about my trying to find a dude on this list. My baby. <laughs> yeah, my baby. Mm, my like baby. that. Baby. He's the love of my <laughs> life. I'll sign for it with him anytime. Mm. And if you don't pay, just call me. I'll flicking pay. Not to be day, baby. <laughs> Those days are over? <laughs> so let's not forget those off balance sheet transactions as well that are not on your books. All right. Principle number 12 banks must have in place a system for monitoring again. I'm sick of monitoring. But you can't be sick of monitoring. No matter how sick of it you might be, the, the sicker you get, the more you should monitor. Because if you stop, dog eat your lunch. All right. Principle 13 consider the future. In other words, you can't just consider what you're doing in business today. You have to consider where is your organization going in the future? What are conditions likely to be? What are you going to do under certain conditions? Can your portfolio withstand a downturn? All these kinds of things top management should be thinking about while you guys further down the line are working like hell and going home tired. Okay, That's their job. Principle 14, establish a system of what? Independence. Why independent? Because if it, if it isn't independent, there's going to be some bias. hanky, yeah, yeah. bias. So and wherever there's bias, there's some hanky hanking. Oh, yeah, and that, oh, what bias. happens, the risk what? Increases. G-O? Metrically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that's all I can say. I know we're talking about credit, but it applies across the board. Absolutely. Number 15, buying position, the credit granting functions being what? Properly managed and that? Credit exposures are consistent with the prudential norms as per the central bank as per Basel. See, we're going back to that again. 
Remember, banks are not operating in by these guidelines automatically. Mm -hmm. The central banks of all the countries of the world, basically, unless they are corrupt, because mm -hmm. some central banks are corrupt, especially if they are run by dictators. Mm -hmm. See? Maduro. <laughs> I'll take the military and take it, because I'm not interested in any free and fair elections. They may not vote for me, and I can't wait. I want it now. So I'll get the military together and take it. And I'm God. All the oil and all the subjects. Point I'm making is without these prudential standards that are established by central banks of, the, of a particular country, then the banks are going to have what? Leeway to do all kinds of crap. And I can assure you, left alone, we are our own worst enemies. That goes for organizations as well. Okay? Trust me. Anybody's read about all the fines around the world, the millions and billions of fines? Mm -hmm. That's because we are our own. And with all these regulations and regulations and basils and all that, guys are still what? Not following the rules every chance they get. And the question is, how come? Aren't they tired paying fines yet? No doubt. They have to be making more within the organization and otherwise to keep doing it. It probably won't stop until we start to what? Fine and in prison. So you pay a huge fine. We confiscate anything you cannot prove you purchase with your own hard working money and you go to prison for a minimum of 40 years. How's that? You think we'll be anxious then? Well, somebody will still do something, but I don't think the numbers will be so. No. Okay. For sure. All right. Principle 16, banks must have a system in place for what? Early action. Know when your accounts are going badly. Be reviewing them to see when they, how people in place to check these things. So that as if you get if you recognize that something is going wrong, what do you do? Fix it mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. possible. Don't put your heads in the sand. Don't get too busy. Don't ignore it. Because sooner or later, if you don't, those facilities will deteriorate, and sooner or later you'll be writing off what tens of millions, mm -hmm. not just little itsy bitsy consumer loan balances, tens of millions. In our country, if you have a consumer loan and you get it down to $3,000, oh, that's not a big balance. They still run you down. Mm -hmm. and, when they, and if you drop dead before they get the 3000 they sue your estate for yeah. the 3000 mm -hmm. even though it doesn't appear to be a lot to us. Imagine that on a large scale internationally being written off. And then number 17, finally, supervision. Okay, Supervisors should require that banks what? Have another, you know, the regulators again. And what are they trying to do? Make sure that we are adhering to the previous 16. Mm -hmm. Essentially. Okay. So when those guys come in there, don't be upset. That's their job. That's. And we're still doing stuff even though we know they're coming. How about that? In fact, some institutions are so bold, regulators go in, point out the problem, and tell them, we'll let you go this time. But when we come back next time, if it isn't fixed, we'll have to do something be down a year or two later, the regular goes back in, the same thing, because they're going back in with the old document, right? Let me see if they fix this. Can I see that? They realize it's still not done. The manual is still what? Outdated. And they said, didn't, <laughs> still the same draft they told them about. And said, excuse me, didn't we tell you the last time? And then some CEO would say, oh, well, yes, I'm... Uh, I gave instructions to somebody, gave instructions to somebody, and everybody went to Switzerland, and we forgot. Whatever the excuse is. Okay. All right. So, how do we deal with these problems? Well, one of the things that have come up in recent years, meaning the last 20, 10, 5 years ago, is something called a risk rating system that we use for managing credit. And these, and risk rating you've heard, is everywhere. Okay, private banking, commercial banking, any kind of financial services, uh, regulators asking us to risk what? Rate everything. 
And the reason for that is so that we can come up with a system to find out what we have in our portfolios, who are the weak ones, uh, who's getting better, who's getting worse, and try to take steps to deal with those that are going south. That's what risk rating is supposed to do. The problem is... Even though risk rating will allow for all kinds of stuff, uh, it will allow banks to be able to check the portfolios, come up with what the problem accounts are, uh, find out what their loan reserves should be based on those ratings. Even though it's designed to do that, some organizations are still potentially playing around with the risk rating. In other words, somebody said recently, uh, we have to set targets. And if we don't meet those targets, we come in the fire at organizations for the amount of loans that we book that month. Same thing is happening with risk rating. Some organizations are allowing one group of persons who book the loan to risk rate it. Should that happen? Because if you book the loan and you have totals to meet at the end of the month, you're going to rate it what? Favorably, even though it might be unfavorable. Because if you risk rate it unfavorably, then that loan is probably going to be what? Declined. Hmm. All right, so let's see what happens. So one of the most popular tools nowadays to monitor credit is what we call a risk rating system. We come up with a grade. That grade could be a number, a letter, a combination, any number of things, and we'll see in a little while how that works. Why do we come up with this risk rating system? Again, to identify and monitor. Identify and monitor. So if you go into a, a file, with 100 loans and they're all rated A, does that bother you? Yes. Why does that bother you? Because I don't think you're objective. I don't think you're objective. Yes, there's too many A's. <laughs> now, she has a point. Uh, they might all be A's, but if you see all A's, that makes you wonder about the objectivity of that portfolio. And confidence of the person who was asked. My, my, my. Is the, did you know that even competent people can egg it? Mm -hmm. Not because they're what? Incompetent, but rather they are? They're what? Human. Meaning? It's human to air. Air. Okay. okay. I wasn't thinking air. <laughs> they're competent, but they are crooked. Yeah. <laughs> Fraudulent. Mm -hmm. Happens all the time. Remember, if you're responsible for risk rating and somebody said they'll give you something on the table if you give it the right risk rating, and you need the money dead bad, or you're just greedy, mm -hmm. then, or, yeah, same thing with targets, same principle. Because remember, risk rating is a kind of target. It's setting targets for the type and quality of loans you have in your portfolio. Remember, in a country like ours, that might be several million dollars in consumer loans, or 700 million per bank or financial institution and in aggregate even more and so I've, in aggregate it adds up to a whole lot of money that you're managing or if you're risk rating incorrectly potentially what miss managing okay and what does risk rating do it allows us to be what we call right. proactive in other words you try to look down the road at the facility before you book it and see whether or not this is something that should be on your books Somebody said earlier, if it meets the guidelines, the devil with it, book it. <laughs> and that may be true. Book it. It's in the guidelines. But you might discover, surprisingly, that everything that's in the guidelines aren't necessarily a good thing to do. For example, let's say you're dating someone and they're behaving within the guidelines. You don't see any visible signs. Oh, that's sick. Everything looks perfect. So even though they're operating within the guidelines while you are dating. Mm -hmm. you get married. Oh, mother's sick. Once you get married. <laughs> she now, that person now member of the board, so they make a policy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is part of the problem. <laughs> exactly. So yes, some loans are like that. Some credits are like that. You could operate within the guidelines and end up with all kinds of write-offs. That's because mm -hmm. you didn't know. Proper well, all kinds of different reasons. Mm. Once you start to what? Even, yeah, like afterwards. After you book Identify it. Yeah, see, <laughs> booking the loan is like getting married. Honestly, <laughs> when you go on like this, honey, we're home. 
And you just sort of <coughs> starting to mori. Oh, my <laughs> dope. What happens? You start making them. Okay, now I'm here. Things are going to change around here. <laughs> Uh, for some, um, in terms of depending um, uh, model for that's coming up for the credit bureau, oh, um, the, ah. it's going to have long-reaching impact on yes. the risk rating system that we currently use in the banking system. Indeed. Uh, one of the models that they're proposing is to even include the way we pay our utilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. As a measurement of. Credit your credit score, worthiness, credit worthiness. And, and, your, average, and your credit score. And the average person does not pay all of their Hell no. We don't pay enough to get by. So yeah, we only have enough to pay to get by. <laughs> no one. And so the portion yes. that we pay will be fine, but the other remaining balance will be delinquent. And all and when the credit bro comes, all of these things are gonna come back to haunt us. Mm -hmm. Because the criteria is potentially going to be such that a lot of these things will come into play. The government has already started doing that. For example, there's certain that you can't clear a shipment without your business license if you're in business. Yeah. So if your business license is not paid up and you have a hundred thousand dollars in shipping, you can't get it. dog eat your lunch. Yeah. Which I agree with. Collect money. Sure. What they need to do though is you can't clear it until you pay your real property tax. I know, but I don't want them to do it to regular poor people like us working. No, I don't want them to do it. I want them to do it with people who have balances of 50000 or more. That's who I want them to do it with. Whatever. Not you and me. Them and up. They should be. You can't renew. You but they, uh, most of those persons, uh, Sam, are in what they call the zone of the city of Nassau, mm -hmm. where they don't pay very much. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. It stinks. So they're going to harass regular folk as usual. And then, and then when we pay, we still owe 400 million. With regards to what Ty spoke about with the um, credit bureau that's coming on, Yes, with them bringing all that information, all that means is that our banks in general and people will have to then determine what their level of risk is going to be yeah. based on what it is that they're seeing. So it may force or it may force banks to now adjust their risk appetite with regards to who we will lend to. They will, because the, the problem is what's going to happen. The banks are probably going to gang up with their credit bureau people, like they gang up with the insurance people. If you don't pay your insurance, the insurance people call the banks and say, Tommy ain't paid. Then the banks chart debit your loan for a trillion dollars uh, interest, and you can't ever get finished with anything because everybody's in. You know. So you tell them, can, so you go to one company and say, can I get a reduced rate? They said, no, that's the limit because there's a typhoon and Kenyanya. And then you go to another company and say, I'm shopping around for a lower rate, can you give me a lower rate? All of a sudden, it's the same as the previous one, which is the same as the pre So there's a little oligarchy going on. So you can't get a lower rate, even though I haven't made a claim in seven years, miss. Can I get a lower rate? No. Everybody's in the same boat. Sink or swim. Do you foresee the same thing happening? If you recall one time ago, we actually had the Clara Bank Association. Mm -hmm. And a part of that, that association probably broke down because banks then started coaching each other's customers. Of course. So in this same scenario, I can see the same That's thing what's going to happen again. Today. Because remember, depending on what the credit bureau criteria is, we still don't know what that's going to be. We still don't know what that's going to be. Whatever's going to be, it's going to hurt the poor people, boring public. I don't know how to spell boring. But that's what's going to happen. And depending on what the criteria is, all of a sudden, the banks are going to be saying, if you think we're not giving loans now, mm -hmm. with that credit score, get... <laughs> yeah, go, go to the numbers people, Bori. The initial catastrophe is going to be that the banks are all going to realize... Once you establish it, that their debt ratio is a lot different than what, actually, what they think it is. No question. So, and, and, and then the bank's loan portfolio starts to go up. Down, because based on the current credit bro criteria, they shouldn't give any loans. And like, uh, so it's going to have all kinds, and then maybe there's a way to be losing bloody money. Yeah. So piss on the credit bro, then it starts to be <laughs> black mark, whatever. It's going to have implications. Yeah. And the extent of those implications are yet to be 
seen. Okay? I, I submit as a humble civil person person that the credit euro, credit bureau thing is a great concept, but for a country with three hundred and fifty thousand people or so, it's not time for it yet. No. I don't know who the hell <laughs> came up with that but yeah it's going to have major implications for persons and organizations one way or the other and we have to wait and see how <laughs> oh it's scary all right any benefits to this rating system yes one is macro one is micro with risk rating you can then go out and see what's happening and make decisions based on what your threats and opportunities are within your portfolio. So if you have 70% rated A and 30% and 20% rated B and the rest Q, then you don't worry too much because that Q is small. Mm -hmm. If it's the other way around or mixed up and all, then the risk rating will allow you to look at your portfolio and plan, wait a minute, what loans are going bad and why? And you start looking at the micro aspects of your loan, now all of a sudden you discover you're giving too many loans to too many unmarried people for mortgages or whatever. Not yeah. that that's the case, just suggestion mm -hmm. okay that's what they that's what the the macro will force you to look on the outside of the big picture and then the micro you start nitpicking hey, wait a minute when you start breaking these loans down into certain categories all of a sudden you discover wait a minute this thing that was rated a is not really not a it's instead z <laughs> who rated this come to find out they don't work there anymore <laughs> <laughs> and so on absolutely or they're somewhere else They've been transferred to the office of the Prime Minister. <laughs> ah, so, like everything else, if we have risk rating, we need a risk rating policy. Like, like credit and any other program you have, the policy should guide what you do. Okay? So, first of all, your policy should deal with the complexity of your loan portfolio and we go on to talk about very specific things that should follow and fall under that complexity portfolio review all right for example this policy should talk about what loans will pass your test your sniff test what loans require special mention what loans are Substantive. which loans are Doubtful. and which you will Lose. all together that's the beauty of having a policy. And the policy should indicate clearly, just like anti-money laundering and terrorist financing, it should clearly state all these different categories. If certain things happen, it's passed. If certain things happen, it requires special mention. We didn't get a guarantor. Certain things happen, this doesn't meet our criteria, criteria or policy st uh, uh, standard. If certain things happen, this loan becomes doubtful mm -hmm. and definitely, mm -hmm. okay? You don't give loans to terrorists. You're never going to collect that money, so to speak. Okay? And that's what policies will do. So it will allow you to set up your portfolio in a certain way that you can actually monitor and see what's going on. Okay? It will also allow you to determine the capacity and the facility that you should give. Does the person credit worthy or not based on certain criteria? What type of loans, how much we'll give? You'll notice, for example, if you go for a business loan somewhere, they might say to you, we can't give you more than seven years. Anybody have the experience? Because the banks in the Bahamas don't like to give commercial loans for more than seven years. If you are considered credit worthy, you've been around a while, you're a well-known contractor from Long Island or something, <laughs> uh, then you can get 10 years, maybe. Okay? And the whole idea behind that is so that we can manage the capacity and the type of loans we give. We definitely, uh, if a straw vendor comes in, it's just open a vendor two months ago. Will we give her a loan at all? <laughs> so, you know, it's one person. Cash secured. Cash secured, maybe. Then she said, Miss, I ain't going to just start. I just need $1,000 to buy me some sisal. No, but there's one ASU that I need that. Oh, you, you can recommend that she joins an ASU? <laughs> and get the first draw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That's where microfinancing comes in, see? Because in poor countries where these things actually exist, people live in mud. 
but they are crafty. They can do stuff with their hands and so on. So these micro loans allow them to get very small loans. The reality is micro loans in some um, countries is actually what's carrying it. You'll see that actually has more weight. It carries a bigger qu um, portion of the Oh, micro now. loans. So when folks, you start going into other territories. Let me, don't, yeah, don't underestimate micro loans. Let's say, for example, in China, $1.3 billion. You don't even have to give each one because all of them don't need it. Half of them have enough stuff. Four, oh, ten, one percent of millionaires and billionaires and all that crap. So let's say half. What is half of 1.3? 600 million? Okay, 600 million. Let's say for argument, 600 mil. And if you give a $1,000 loan to 600 mil, what's your loan portfolio? Anybody has a calculator that can hold those numbers? 600 million times 1,000. Three more zeros. 600 million, million, million in your portfolio. Now, if 10% of them go bad, so, what? so who gives a damn? See my point? That's the beauty. Now, if you give a few micro loans, like some people over Bain Town, and they go to Inagua and disappear, then you lost money. Inagua. Or Meguana. Or Freeport. Then you've lost money. But if you give it to this gang, that's, and that's only China alone. So this this microfinancing thing is who said it? Somebody. It's huge business. Okay. Africa has 1.2 billion. Same principle. What a sick. India has 1.3 billion, which is where a whole bunch of micro loans are being done these days. In fact, they believe that that's where micro loans were born in India. No, but that's why you see those during the jurisdictions, um, you'll see more banks are investing heavily in terms of... You can see why. Because of that. remember, when Mary, and, and particularly a lot of women in these areas who were disenfranchised for a long time, mm -hmm. a lot of them are, get, are now able to get a loan of some kind. Mm -hmm. So they come and borrow $1,000, and they sell the little trinkets, and they pay, what, $10 a month, mm -hmm. see, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then they go back, and they pay that well, they go back and get 2000 this time. And they pay, what, $20 a month. Their building is growing. They have a whole big old ma. It's big business now. Mm -hmm. Those same little crazy loans of people who are disenfranchised. All of a sudden, it's a multi-million, billion dollar uh, industry. Even the Bahamas, we're doing it now. We have the SCBDC thing. It's done with the, between the government and, 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 and uh, the College of Bahamas and so on. They're giving little itsy bitsy loans to folks. And now people can buy stuff, open up their loans, little thing in there. So when Disney comes in the Lutra, they can open up a little bank down there. Because people will be selling all kind of crap down there. <coughs> What's down there? B.O.B. in the South. B.O.B. is in the Lutra? Yes. That's why we can't mess with B.O.B. Put your money there. No matter what those guys did with the other money. Because B.O.B. has to what? Succeed. For more reasons than one. That's why anybody that's fine messing around with the loan portfolio at B.O.B. ever again should be imprisoned. Because they're not only filling their lousy, stupid political pockets, but they're jeopardizing what? The future of a very viable organization that we have to have, just in case. Ping on them. <laughs> anyway, how do I get that? Just thought I'd throw that out. In case you thought, yeah, in case you thought B.O.B. was just there jiving. We... Just like Commonwealth Bank, they have to succeed. And so whoever's egging, they need to stop forthwith. Mm -hmm. And I think some things have happened to try to stop it forthwith. Mm -hmm. We'll have to wait and see. All right. So what else is happening with risk rating? Ah, consider some other issues for risk rating purposes. Consider collateral and guarantors and letters of credit. How, do you, how can these improve risk rating? Yeah, if somebody comes unsecured, you're going to have a lower rating. Mm -hmm. If they have collateral, what's going to happen? 
Higher rating. If they have collateral and guarantor, higher rating. If they have, you see what I mean? If they can make their payments through letter of credit rather than some like crypto Bitcoin thing, then you're going to consider doing business with them sooner because you don't want to put your money in the crypto thing yet. Because when it goes in the crypto, the dark thing, like where is it going? <laughs> Along the way, somebody dropped dead with the code. And your money? All right, so by all means. All right, unsecured loans, for example, will have a higher, a lower rating because they're riskier, secured loans, same principle. All right, and let's not forget the regulators. Okay, regulatory expectations continue to rise. Why? Because regulators are holding financial institutions to the highest standard that they ever did be for, especially the fact that financial institutions have been doing so much crap. Okay. Unfortunately. All right. So, this risk rating policy then is designed to be a discipline so that we can evaluate how we're going to be paid, how we're going to secure our facility, and what kinds of protections we're going to put in place to make sure that we get our money what? Back. Now, for those of you who are not interested in getting your money back, that's fine. But I can assure you, lenders and financial institutions, when they give loans, they expect to get their money back. And then some. Don't borrow from any American firms. They'll run you into the ground. When you get up, the phone will ring. All day, your phone will ring. At dinner at night, the phone will ring. When you struggle with your spouse, the phone will ring. When you're changing diapers, they don't quit. And they want all. And the, yes, mm -hmm. and the more they call you, the worse your rating gets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where soon you live a doll's life. You wouldn't even be able to get a loan for a lollipop. For sure. All right. What else is under this policy? Final authority for risk rating should be what? Structured and safeguarded from? What's that? So even the people who are setting the risk rating have to be people of what? Integrity. Who are not going to mess with the rating. And when you put these people in place, you need, that's what, when the regulators come in, they say, have you risk rated these clients? What criteria did you use? Is the criteria detailed enough? Who's responsible for risk rating? Is the person sane enough to do this? What experience do they have? They start asking all kinds of questions because they don't want any half-dead employee <laughs> or some such thing messing around with what? Risk rating. Because when you sit down to risk rate, you have to have a what? Broad perspective. Not no, in, in my gut, I feel. That's not good enough. When you look at the whole portfolio, you have to look at that from the big picture and then from both a macro and a micro. Absolutely. And then assign a rating. And it goes so far later on to say that the criteria for risk rating should be predetermined so that everybody is what? On the same page. Absolutely. Such that when one person is risk rating, they're not using a different criteria from somebody else or somebody else. Uh, because we know that that kind of inconsistency will not fly. Mm -hmm. okay? The regulators will eat that up. And it's not good for your firm. What about final responsibility for rating should be separate from what? Anyone who is? Compensated. <laughs> so if somebody is responsible for totals, don't let them touch the risk rating. Don't let them talk to anybody who works in risk rating. Don't let them brush up to anybody. Don't let them, if you see them having dinner together, fire one. I'm not fire, you know what I mean. I'm just making a point. It should be unbiased. If you sell, if you have to meet totals at the end of the month and you are risk rating, sooner or later you're gonna be tempted to. Make no mistake, no matter how well you start off. Oh, Worse <laughs> than Nari, they might be hanging out somewhere, <laughs> secretly, <laughs> making plans on how to manipulate the system. Mm -hmm. I'll be book the totals, oh, you risk them the way we say to risk rate them. <laughs> <laughs> All 
No matter how stinky it is, risk rate it high. Because you're my girl and I'm your guy. <laughs> and what, and here's 300 to get your nails did. <laughs> oh, from the legs. There we go from the legs to the other. <laughs> so, so notice how small this paragraph, this little sentence is. Mm -hmm. But this little tiny sentence is absolutely. This bloody sentence can bring down systems. Bring on regulators and cost you your job and your reputation. The same little sentence if you violate it. Okay. Also, the person responsible for assigning risk rating should be what? Different from the person approving the loan. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist for that. Mm -hmm. In other words, let's keep this risk rating exercise independent. Mm -hmm. That's how crucial the risk rating process is. It has to be done by somebody who is totally unaffected. If it does, and the policy is Probably weak, yeah. flawed, and the regulators will, sooner or later, find you out <laughs> and tell you the next time you come, they expect that policy to be what it should be. <sighs> then we have this other control measure that risk rating policies get involved in. That has to do with approval level. Remember we talked about that? Why do we have them? We have them because if the portfolio is large, we can't have one person jive in with that. It has to go to committee. Okay? If the risk rating has to change, one person? Uh-uh. Maybe it's a committee, two people. Ting them and ting them them. But we can't have one person messing with this. Okay? So, does anybody's firm use a scorecard? Yeah, what does a scorecard do? I know Scotia used to do it. Scotia still does that? Yes. Yeah, it's there electronically. They come in, how long have you been there? So, oh, one year. Mother's sick, minus 52. <laughs> <laughs> Put from your score. Uh, how long have you been? Oh, I've been in government for 25 years. Oh, my God. Plus 150, <laughs> like that. And they do that for all these little things. Uh, and then they come up with a score. And if your score is satisfactory based on some predetermined, then they'll consider giving you the loan. If that score is not, yeah. They tell you why you can't, well, they tell you the loan has been declined, yes. Okay. I've seen them using evaluations. It's a kind, uh, evaluation is a kind of scorecard. The scorecard is just applying numbers to certain criteria. Okay? Evaluations might be non-numerical, or it might be a combination of both, which, which we'll see, by the way. Let's see if it comes next. Banks have gotten a lot of banks recently because of persons manipulating those same scores and those ratings over time. They have now taken most of them and put them into a system where you don't know what the ratings or the criteria for rating is beforehand. So Indeed. You know, you spit out a number. Indeed. You don't know what it is until yeah. you put in the information. The information and then yeah. the system spills out the required number. Mm -hmm. And you may not necessarily see that number. It, you may see it or it may be in there. You can't see it until you get to the... End. And then it spills out. Oh, what a six, seven. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no. 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 Not, in the, in the more not that system. Maybe the other one, but not the most up to date system. Yeah. No, and even the, I mean, the one that, that is currently that's used here, I mean, that's closer. If you go back and change the information that you previously, if, if you previously input it, it, it impacts the score again. Mm -hmm. Say that you're trying to manipulate it. Yeah, or it wouldn't allow you to do it, even if it at was, all. Even if it was an error. If you were wrong, yeah. Absolutely. Do it right the first time. And if even if you're trying to correct something in good faith, yeah. it either wouldn't allow you to do it, and it's that recording that you're trying to do something. Yeah. And then yeah. someone messes come and who the hell is that? It takes note of you. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so it doesn't leave any room for play. <laughs> <laughs> now, folks, this one is not quantitative. This is purely qualitative. See? The policy provides a control to ensure that credit analysts are applying what? Expert judgment. To their review. <laughs> now, expert judgment has a 
involves a lot of things, including experience and training and background and the particular discipline and so on. Okay, yeah. Which for some of us also include that sick feeling to the stomach when you look at an application and you start stomachs are feeling heavy. And even though you, oh. yeah, that gut feeling, that gut feeling stings. Anybody ever gets a gut feeling still? Absolutely. I, that stinks. Because usually when you get a gut feeling, most of the times you are right. So if you're going out with somebody and you get that gut feeling, just lose them. Don't call me, I'll call you. Not. So what's wrong with me? Nothing. Am I not sexy? Yes. It's the sexiest thing ever. But anyway, don't call me. See these guys in the back, they don't get no gut feeling. If they've got, if they have full life, they still go and they're like, oh. Something else in their guts. Yeah. Guys too, we just act to it on it differently. Yeah. Women tend to act on a gut feeling sooner than we do. We have the feeling, we know. We know we should leave that check. Because y'all think <laughs> Which head y'all thinking with them? That's the problem. Okay. Say <laughs> so chicks thing. Yes, that's it right there. But we, we just keep looking at stuff. <laughs> so I try to educate myself. <laughs> you better. Let me say, let me say they come with a small waist like that. Small waist. <laughs> <laughs> My baby say you like solid chicks. <laughs> Is that something you're going to tell us all man? Yeah, the one who's 21 who just got thing. Yeah. Now this is a small waist, and this is a solid check. Yeah, something like that. I'm like, how the hell you can tell your father that's a guy? I'm, I'm a man now. Should we be able to have a discussion? <laughs> I know, I'm just, I'm just playing the devil's advocate. I encourage them to do it at the right age and to not do it at the wrong age. So of course I encourage it. What's the wrong age? Like seven. <laughs> you know, like stuff like that. Eleven. Daddy, can you imagine that? Grade six. I see a girl, I want to touch her. I'm like, no, you, let me tell you, you better be encouraging them kind of talks at that age because let me tell you something, they're watching TV. No, Whatever we have the discussion, it's just that it's at a certain caliber, yeah. And then as you get older, it gets more intense and more direct, like that. And so now he's 21, I can tell him all kind of crap. Because if you don't tell him who they can like the TV, you can tell him who they should like. Remove that chick for you see. Okay. Uh, so what is a credit rating? It is this. Now for those of you who are still not clear, let me just say this. Is anybody here involved in credit rating? Risk rating of any kind? Yes. Okay. So a couple of you are. A couple of you might be in the future. A couple of you might have to do it for your own personal lives. Like you have to risk rate your children. Yes. Did you know that? Yeah. Risk rate your spouse. Yeah. Yep. Risk rate your current fiance, boyfriend. Like, mother sick, I need to leave this dude. Risk rate your job. Or whatever. Your job. The job. Yeah, risk rate your job. Yep. Okay? So it isn't a waste of time then mm -hmm. to define it. So let's look at it. So credit rating is defined as an evaluation of credit of a what? A a, of what we call in the Bahamas a borea. Mm -hmm. Who could be a? Individual. A? A? Business. A? Company. Or? Government. Absolutely. See, where's the 8.2 bill? Okay. And predicting their ability to what? Pay predicting their ability to? Boy, that's the seriousness of all. Am I going to be repaid? Whether it's $10, your rent money, or millions of dollars. The question is the same. Am I going to be repaid? Okay. And an implicit forecast of the what? Likelihood of the debtor? That's what risk rating is all about. So when you look at a facility, a loan, a portfolio, or any such thing, these are the things you have to be thinking about in terms of rating that facility. And if you consistently get a low grade for each category, <laughs> you need to rethink that. Okay? The key word is defaulting. defaulting. The fact that you won't get your money, money back. back. 
Okay, that stinks. All right, another definition can be defined as the measuring of credit risk through a combination of what? Quantitative and? Qualitative. All right, we're going to see what they are. And using? Judgmental. Yeah, don't forget your gut. Now, if you, know, if, you ignore, if you're famous for ignoring your gut, that will cost you something eventually. I know for sure in my experience in my lifetime, Anytime I ignore my gut for any reason, you pay the price. Yes. Yeah. Either you or the board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or somebody else. Mm -hmm. Seriously. And I hate that. I hate when I walk into a situation and I get that gut and I go, yeah. oh, okay, who's the culprit now? Mm -hmm. Including the culprit could be who? Me. Mm -hmm. See? So let's say I walk into somewhere I shouldn't be, like a strip club. And I get that heavy feeling, and like somebody who knows watching. me, right? watching, yeah. 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 and as soon as they see me, they do like this. These, especially nowadays, phone. Oh, who they call first? No. Melanie. They don't allow phones. Yeah. 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 People sneak it in. They start at the door then and take my picture. And send it immediately. When I get home, face stiff, neck long. And I want to, yeah, that's. I get home? And the picture. I got to just. So you can have a I can have a home, but once you reach home, I mean, maybe I home. Ah, boy. Thought about risk. So they left the phones. That was sick. Now, folks. Oh, man. Let me say this. The fact that the strip club says that there are no phones, they are mitigating against murder. They risk. Risk. Exactly. In they fact, they may exactly. even be mitigating against murder. <laughs> they keep somebody from getting up. Murder. But they, they would, uh, the guy says, listen, they take away the phone, but they also record you, right? I know. That's for their purpose, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Mill. Yeah. So, it's your egg if you do, your egg if you don't. Yeah. And what excuse can you have if they have the picture? And it's like, what I can say, I'm an old guy now, I'm a mature, I'm an adult, I should be able to go wherever I feel like. That doesn't work either. I'm trying to save the world. Ah. So, those are the things we do to see stuff. Those of you who are involved in risk rating, anything. Anything. The reason, the reason why you're doing it, and the reason why we have risk rating policies, and the reason why we have this manual of risk rating procedures, is there are a couple of things. First of all, it's there so that everybody's on the same page. Universally mean, whether it's government firm, whatever, everybody understands the rules. Everybody's on the same page, and it's applied what? Consistently, it has nothing to do with how you feel, who you know, who paid you off. Well, that's the point. Secondly, it should contain a minimum number of categories. not too many because you keep adding more categories, starts getting what complex. confusing and complex. Mm -hmm. So, you, you walk into an organization where there are tons and tons of risk rating categories, sooner or later, people are going to lose track and interest, yeah. mm -hmm. and the process is going to become inefficient. Yeah. And ultimately, ineffective. Okay? So keep the categories simple. Three, five, seven, ten. Something like that. So you could be, it can be controlled. Uh, let's not forget these three babies here. Accuracy, clarity, and brevity. Keep it correct, keep it clear, and keep it brief. Actually, those rules apply to anything you're doing. I, so. I can assure you, if you can apply not only risk rating, mm -hmm. it'll make your life a whole lot easier. The more complicated we make stuff, oh, duh. All right. There should be individual ownership for whatever problems come up. You're risk rating. You take responsibility for a bad rating and then deal with it. 
And any problem account should have a what? Strategy or action plan. A lot of organizations lose their money to bad debt because they don't have any strategy for collecting the money. They call a couple of times, people don't show up, they get tired, they say, uh, and that's it. Things go to hell. All people have certain connections and they don't make any effort to collect because they never intended to collect. That's the resolved thing. Those loans are given with no intention to collect. It seems. Don't say that. I know. I hope I'm so wrong. It's pathetic. All right. So what are some examples of risk ratings? Well, remember, keep it simple. 1A means you have a high quality loan or facility or portfolio, top of the line. 1B means it's not highest, but it's very strong, still high value, fast track, things are looking good. Two, now again, you can change these to suit your organization. This can easily be A, B, C, D, E, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, do you follow? Mm -hmm. All right, so these are just guidelines. Mm -hmm. If you have to actually risk rate, you can be creative anytime as long as you do it simply, carefully, and it follows the basic criteria. Remember, keep it accurate, keep it clear, clear and keep it brief. brief. Absolutely. All right, so somebody is two, they're fully satisfactory, pretty good, no previous problems. Now, when we get to three, we start saying what? Average stuff. Mm -hmm. There are some minor weaknesses, but the facility is still? Acceptable. But we should put them on the? Watch list. The other three were not, because they surpass the criteria. They're okay. And again, we, can, we have to be doing this on a what? Ongoing basis. Because you remember, six months ago, when it was, could be great, but today it could be? Things change. Okay? Absolutely. Monitor, monitor, monitor. Four means it's now a? Week. And there is a possible loss. loss. <clears throat> we shouldn't be waiting until it gets here to try and do something about it. How would you rate those clients that don't pay on time, but they pay? So if they miss a month, they don't have a lot of week. Which one would they be? 1A, B, 2, or 3? I'd say 4. 4? Possible Three. loss? Those clients are not, not normally possible losses. Three. They will pay that loan eventually. Yeah. They just okay. never Three. on time. 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 Okay. So we would yeah, we wouldn't say they're a possible loss. Right. Okay. We will say probably that there are some minor weakness like weakness that they're always late. Yeah. Yeah. But they but they pay once a month. Yeah. Every month. But never on ever time. on time. <laughs> will you give them a loan again? Yeah. Sure, I yes, would. Yes. As long as I can establish the trend yeah. that they pay every month. The hell with it if you're three days, five days, ten days, even fifteen. I don't give a flying fish as long as you pay it once a month. <laughs> and in salary it does a lot of times. Reality, well, sometimes yes. you can't get it. Yeah. If you could get salary reduction, you don't have that problem. Most Hopefully. Times managing the relationship and understanding, like you said, what's the frequency. Absolutely. Now, there are some lenders, the minute you lay a few times, they never give you credit again. No. Like, never. And what happens? They lose a whole big bulk of customers yeah. and their children and their children friend and their family and their family. See what I mean? Yeah. Potentially. Just because they have a late paying I don't care if you pay late. But no, I, I care. I want you to pay on time. Yeah. Ms. Jones. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Of course. Them late fees. Yeah, there's a little, make some money off it. If Ms. Jones don't mind paying a late fee, I don't care. As long as Ms. Jones does not miss two or three payments in what? Succession. Because yeah. now, once that starts to happen, then we're entering what? The weak category. But if she or he's doing that once a month, paying a little late fee, and they're happy, I'm happy as a lender. You know, we have customers get a lot of fees. Okay. Credit cards. They manage their loans very well. But when it comes to those credit cards, we never pay them before the time. Yeah, unfortunately. And that's something that even the borrower has to be concerned about, not just the lender. The lender wants you to pay the credit card on time or before time. But if, if you want day late, they don't care because they collect a $50 late fee and stuff like that and harass you. So, yeah, even as the borrower, the user of a credit card, we have to be mindful that we, if we're one day late, they can take off anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks, depending on what card you have. Did you know that? 
So if you pay a little minimum fee of 100 bucks, 50 that goes to late fee and interest. So the only thing that goes to principal is $7 plus VAT or some students like that. <laughs> and you're wondering why my card isn't moving. Every time I check for my available balance, it's only $3 more. <laughs> That's why. Here? Yeah. Actually, you start here. Once I hit the watch list, you start here. But if they down to here, then you start really doing some work to see what might be going on with that client. Whether it's an individual, a company, a government. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, because they got standard and pause and movies who rate companies with debt. Absolutely. Okay? And again, the level of debt, debt service ratio, debt to doggone um, GDP and all that stuff help to determine where you fit in the, and they help predetermine categories. Just like your organization should have for what? It's risk rating. Predetermined. Not on the spur of the moment. But a spur of the moment thing stinks. <laughs> the only spur of the moment thing that works well is like hugging. I see that. That depends too. Don't spur the moment. Depend who you is. Yeah, don't touch me if you're anything. I'm. That's a get permission. <laughs> Man, in the old days, when people bop us, you can hit each other's butt back. You can't do any of that crap no more. I tell my son, boy, I don't care what. Don't touch no chick unless she give you a written. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I don't have anything against like other folk. <laughs> Some of them I grew up with and they're still my friends. I don't have any problem with them as individuals. All I want them to know is don't further complicate my life. I have enough problems as it is. I love that. Okay? But I don't have any. Oh, that's sick. Okay. <laughs> Somebody distracted me with that. Alright. Yeah, here. Four <laughs> means you're weak. There are possible losses. It's time to really do some checking up. Preferably here. Don't wait until it gets here. Sometimes you go from here to here suddenly. So yeah, you have to start doing something here. So again, now you can see why it's important to be what? Monitoring. Because mm -hmm. if you're not monitoring, you're not going to be into any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. But no way. Okay? And did I tell you guys, like, Miss, Miss my wife, she's the thickin' Kiss me outside, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't know that she'll be most hurt. I'm just kidding. But, yeah, she, like, sees the, the number one monitor. <laughs> you said that. You said that. Man, look here. Mm -hmm. When I go, I just start, like, taking cell phone. She's like, there's something in your ear. I'm like, oh, mother's sick. <laughs> and I come from work, she's like, oh. You look at you just went to work and oh what, what she's doing? <laughs> Monitoring, <laughs> checking the Yeah, I was like, what's that? I'm like, okay. But she 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 understands this very well. This crap works. Okay? And the, if more firms would monitor, they'd see when these things are happening, when these things are shifting. And therefore you can do what? take steps to deal with it sooner rather than later. I just walked into a firm not too long ago where I was doing some consultancy stuff and I discovered that the firm is now undergoing litigation with a particular client. Come to find out the client is suing and winning because the firm was lackadaisical. They bloody did not act in a timely manner on a matter. Now they're going to lose two or three million dollars as a result. Because they failed to monitor. Something came in, they were not on their game. Somebody put it down, somebody got busy, somebody said to hell with it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. See? All the time. And you'll be surprised what firms it happens in. Not only little itsy bitsy, you know, but multi million dollar firms. Okay? For sure. All right, so this stuff is real. When we get to five, now we're already experiencing losses. We already know part of it. It's gone for some reason. Okay? When you drive past your customer, you see for sale sign up, fire sale. So you know something is not right. I encourage you to go in and make an inquiry and try to salvage. But hopefully you can get to 
you don't get to this. Mm -hmm. Okay? But sometimes things happen suddenly, even when you are watching. So you miss things. And then finally, if you're here, you know, yeah. anybody picking up this portfolio knows that mm -hmm. you're going to suffer a complete loss. Mm -hmm. All right? Because the account is going to be case. written off. And when you pick it up, everything in the file should say, yes, it is appropriate to write right. it off. Because sometimes something yeah. might be up for write off, but it might be questionable. And all of a sudden you check the details and discover it's really not a real write-off. Somebody is writing it off for some reason. Yes. My mother said, yeah, they give their friends six mil, they get three mil, and the year later they authorize that it be written off forever. Yes. How about that? I'm money laundering. That's teeth in. Right. <laughs> yeah, that ain't no money laundering. That's pure, unadulterated, high level teeth. Because we can't do it in, in the, at our levels. Hell no. When I said we don't, we don't have the authority, we don't have uh -uh. That stuff always happens where? Up the line. Sick. Serious teeth. Serious teeth. Sick. All right. So, as we consider credit, credit risk and risk rating, usually those of us in this business who are talking about it have certain categories uh, of organizations that we talk about so that we could kind of give some meat to this concept. And there are several different types of lending going on here, just so that you can see that, first of all, they exist, and secondly, they what? They apply the risk and credit issues in different ways. All right. So we have the microfinancing group. We talked about that. Then we have personal lending, also known as consumer loans. Then we have this gang down here, SMEs. Ever heard about them? Small, medium, and medium size. They're not as small sometimes as you think. Okay. Uh, if you've read ahead, you've seen that. If you haven't, you'll be shocked that they're not as small as you think, even though we call them small and medium size. We only call them that in relation to what? The humongous firms, okay? And then we have the typical corporations, which we all know how uh, they're doing stuff, and then finally, project financing. All right, let's take a few minutes before we break, just to look at them, one or two of them really quick, and then we, last, next week is our last week already? The hell? Time buddy flies. Okay. So what is microfinance? We already said Moon, loans to persons in the lower income brackets. Okay, those people who do not have access to normal loans and savings and stuff, microfinancing firms, they set up, they give the little small loans and they make tons of money. By the way, they do charge them significant rates of interest, but because the loan is so small, what happens? And they get to pay back such a little bit every month, they don't feel it. But the firm is making money. Okay? Um, so when, when Ravi goes for my clients, so yeah. Ravi says, can I have $100,000? He says, no, pro no problem, Ravi. Uh, that, that this one will be at 12%. No problem, it's only money. <laughs> <laughs> but then you multiply that by a whole bunch of crap, and suddenly Ravi is satisfied. His monthly payment is very small, even though they're robbing him or whatever, and the banks are booming. Or whoever's giving the loan. Doesn't have to be a bank. No way. Uh, 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 money, the, 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 the money boys in Nassau are involved in major microfinancing. Anybody in Nassau now who need a little money for buy shoes or some uniform money, they say, man, you all ain't going to give me no money. I ain't got no buy. Yeah, I go, yeah. I go on to what thing I'm locked, lock, go there or some other place and get a micro loan. Sign cash. Yeah. Sun Cash. Think I'm all. Yeah. They do micro loans. Yeah, we get, I mean, salary, we salary thingy. If you need 500 bucks real quick, you could go there and then assign your salary and then get pay back at the end of the month. It's an open counter? Well, yeah, there's the, you know, the luxury. <laughs> That's the question. You have to go to the registry and investigate. Yeah, it's a kiosk. 
Who owns it? That is the question. I discovered because I walked past and I heard the lady tell me all personal information. I said, what's going on here? And then what did you do? What did I do? I kept walking past. Okay. No, but it is when you need it, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm just checking. So she's like, don't ask me what the hell I did. I moved, I moved on. All right. So why are these microfinancing groups? Well, we know they give small-scale loans to income people, uh, designs of sustain sustainable economic growth in uh, developing countries for sure, mostly, and they can get a broad range of services that they normally would get to a normal bank. They can't afford a normal bank. They can't afford to walk in a bank at Obama's Coast, your bank, doggone, come on, hell no. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, people look at them, miss, you need to take a shower. Because oh, some of them haven't taken a shower yeah. in weeks because mm -hmm. they need the water to drink not bathe mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. just making a point all right there's a problem though these her clients are what they don't they don't know know so it's taking a risk when you give them money you might get it back but we're hoping that we get what 80 percent back 70 mm -hmm. percent even 60 yeah, percent yeah, all right absolutely okay it's costly to provide the service to them because what they can't pay all the banking fees. Any bank who goes there on a certain salary is going to cost them. But that's okay. They're going to recover it. <coughs> Otherwise, especially yeah. they can get the what? Interest. Numbers. Yeah. Interest. The, and the, yeah, the numbers means and high interest rates. Mm -hmm. They're going to recover that cost. And of course, they have no collateral. The only collateral Ravi have is Ravi. <laughs> or you can take some of the 15 children that he has per household. Eventually, sure. Like anything, the startup cost is higher, things. and then once you once you build yeah. a clientele, yeah, you start covering your costs with no problem. Mm -hmm. All right, and then finally, uh, we'll we'll end the day uh, on who are these people uh, credit unions are considered. Mm -hmm. okay. Why? Because in the Bahamas, when we need a couple of bucks, right? Mm -hmm. If you save two thousand dollars of credit union, they give you four. Yep. If you save one thousand, they give you two. If you have five hundred, they might give you two thousand still. Especially if you work for government. If you are a teacher and you go to the teachers and salary credit, see what I mean? So yeah, they do that share of microfinancing. Even some commercial banks, God bless their soul. They're merry soul. <laughs> They're not thrilled about it. But you know, I get lucky every now and then. What about NGOs? Mm -hmm. Non-government organizations such as cooperatives. Co yeah, co-ops. They get together, put money in, and then lend each other money. Microloans. Mm -hmm. Certain sections of the government like the mm -hmm. Bahamas Development Bank. If you don't can't get it to Royal, come to us. Mm -hmm. We'll give you all the loans you want as long as they are in the guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to stop there today. Please read the... <laughs> Yeah, please read. <laughs> please read the, the case study. Make sure you make notes on all the issues that we've talked about. Plus anything else, we'll talk about that for a few minutes. And when we come next week, we'll finish up. Have a great week. All right, thank you. And give a micro loan to somebody. Too much work. Get nothing. Everybody has a copy. Let me take a more than enough time to still. Yes. You come to wait for your journey. Yeah. And you won't eat all day, you just like a computer? Yeah, you don't want to see it. No. No. I know how it is. Yeah, come here. Thank you. Okay, take care. Have a great week. You want to come out or no? Take care, young man. See you later. Take care. See you next time. Wait till I go to the car to find the key.
No, you can't. <laughs> you won't be able to see it. But yeah, that's right. That's fine. Right. I was, I was dying. I'm going to this class tonight. Even though you're interesting. Yeah. I can't really see how I'm the last person to live. And I die as hell. I know. <laughs> Super tired. Oh, new season. Oh, Jellery's Hardy. Oh, Jellery's? Yes. So you weren't here last week? No, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Somehow we, um, there was some miscommunication with HR. Have a good week. I Thank you. I literally too. missed five sessions, but um, it like... I guess one of the guys in the bathroom said he was mandated. I had to come because we need to. Yeah, that's okay because you still have quite a few more left modules. Right. Mm -hmm. So just on the weekends or whatever, try yeah. and just catch up, read up. Yeah. And well, you should I'm be catching fine. up with this plus yeah. doing the CPA. Oh so my you God. know. But I have. You to. have a death wish, yeah. I see. You know, I have to. I have to. Yeah, I have to. Um, we, we just need to be able to become abreast of what's going on. We need to be able to establish a plan of action. You know, so yeah. we can mitigate risks. I, I understand. Trust yeah. me completely. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I didn't even know we got up at 8.30. And I'm telling my husband, no, the thing says 6 to 9. Oh, yeah, because you want to usually we go straight through. We yeah. don't take a break. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. So next week, we just go straight through from 6 to 8.30. Okay, sir. And All right. Then I'll just wait just over leave. here. All right. Thank no you. Take okay. care. All right. See you next oh, time. Oh, you said something to do with the case study. You said to read the case read study. Read the case study and mm. then make notes on the concepts that we've discussed. Okay. In tonight's uh, class. And what have you read okay. for the yeah. previous modules. Okay. That for this particular section. Okay. For and the then see if you can identify.